Ahoy there! I'm Captain Benzi, and welcome to the new and improved Cat Skull Academy, the series that aims to teach you everything you'll need to know about Eve Echoes. Today's lesson is an introduction to the Cat Skull Academy. We're going to be having a look at what this course is all about and what it intends to do and what it does not intend to do. We're then going to have a look at how to survive your very first day in Eve Echoes so that once you've installed the game, you can jump right in and start on the basic tutorials. And then we're going to have a look at a couple of basic concepts that are important for new players to understand. Basically, skills and monetization. If you do enjoy this video, please let me know by hitting like on it, subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell so that you never miss out on future content, and of course, come join me on Patreon if you want to go the extra mile to help support this content. That all said and done then, let's jump right in. Now the first thing that we need to talk about is what this course is and what this course isn't. This course is designed as a basic introduction to everything you'll need to know to get started in EVE Echoes, and as we go on, we will start expanding those concepts. So in future lessons, we will have a look at things like your ship overview, understanding the heads up display, menus, what all the different ship stats mean, we'll look at basic concepts like navigation and proper management of your ship, then we'll start to have a look at the different careers that are possible in EVE Echoes. Things like player versus environment and player versus player combat, mining and industry, trade, freight and exploration. Then we will go into depth on each of those different topics as well, having a look at how to get involved in combat, for example, how to make ISK, how to progress through the game, and all of that kind of thing from there. So, we're going to start off today, as I said, just by having a look at how to survive your very first day in Eve Echoes, and then talk about skills and monetization. The first decision that you're going to have to make upon starting a new character is which of the four races you want to be. And don't stress it too much, this isn't actually as important as it may first appear. Ultimately, the only thing that this is going to lock you into is which of the four corvettes you use, and we'll talk more about those in just a moment, and what kind of icon, what kind of picture you have for your particular character. Beyond that, Anything that the starting races give you, you can still get from the other empires as well. So, for example, if you were to start as a Ma, start playing the game and realise that actually you quite like Kaldari ships and Kaldari weapons, you can easily swap through to those. The tutorial will give you access to racial ships, but after the tutorial, once you start playing the game properly, you will be able to fly any ship from any of the four races other than the corvettes, but corvettes are just little free ships that you can use from getting A to B, don't stress those too much. Now the four races, therefore, tend to come down to just personal preference of how you identify with their backstory, or whether you like the particular graphics that you can be used to represent your character. Obviously as well, as I said, the tutorial, which ships you have available in the tutorial does depend on which of the four races you pick. So without further ado, let's have a look at them. Starting from left to right, we have the Amar Empire. These guys are religious zealots who believe that their god has given them dominion over the entire universe. They are free, therefore, by God's will to enslave, torture, and do whatever they wish in order to be sort of the top dogs of the galaxy. Now, their ships tend to be this ivory and gold coloration, and they use lasers. So if you like the concept of shooting something with high-power laser beams, then the Amar are probably the Empire for you. The Galente Federation are all about individual freedom. If you are big on making sure that you can do whatever you want, whenever you want, and ain't nobody can stop you, then the Galente might be right up your alleyway. These guys are all about these sort of weirder ship designs. In fact, the Megathron that you see on screen now is probably one of their most sane ship designs, followed by the Celestis, which I personally believe is one of the ugliest ships in the game. Now, the Galente Federation are known for their drone technology, so if you like the concept of having little tiny ships that go off and do the fighting for you, then the Galente may be a great start for you. They also use rail guns, which are just sort of high-powered electromagnetic cannons that, you know, do a good spread of damage to both shields and to armor. The Kaldari State are our third empire here. These guys, you can kind of imagine them as if sort of Western 
uh, American sort of capitalism rammed in with sort of a Japanese zaibatsu kind of feel. Everything is about the business, about the corporation, your work is your family, and it's all about making sure that everything you do is for the glory of the Kaldari state. They're actually verging on sort of a neo-fascism thing going on here, um, but not quite as bad as that sounds on paper. Ultimately, the Kaldari state is just big on making money for the state and making the state more powerful. They tend to have fairly rugged looking ship designs, and they tend to go for sort of slate greys and icy sort of colours, angular designs to their ships, and these ships tend to use things like missiles, um, which if you like the concept of launching torpedoes and missiles at your opponents, um, then the Kaldari might be right up your street. They do, like the Glente, also use railguns on a lot of their ships as well, so if that sounded cool but you didn't like the look of the Glente ships, well, the Kaldari might be your thing. Finally then, we have the Minmatar Republic. Now the Minmatar are a sort of tribal race. Originally the seven clans on the planet Minmatar sort of came together and they spread into space, only to be subjugated by the Amar. A lot of the Minmatar were enslaved by the Amar due to some fairly recent sort of galactic history. The slaves have broken free, gone back and started up the Minmatar Republic, where ultimately they are still trying to free their bro brothers and sisters from the clutches of the Amar. So if you like playing as sort of the guerrilla fighter underdog with hit and run tactics, the Minmatar are pretty much that. These guys value very much the function of their ship over its design, so you tend to see that these look like a lot more stripped down hulls, a lot more function over form rather than something sort of beautiful and ostentatious like the Amar have. A lot of Minmatar ships literally look like they were, you know, solar panels and engines strapped together with duct tape and rust, and that's kind of the aesthetic we're going for here. These guys primarily use cannons, so if you like the idea of just launching tons of metal through space at high velocities in the strictest sort of projectile cannon way, then the Minmatar do that very well. They also are pretty good with missiles, a lot of their ships use missiles like the Kaldari, um, and they tend to actually have a nice balance between shield and armor tanking and some of the faster ships in the game, so it kind of is up to you if that's what you like. Fast and fragile hit and run, that's going to be the Minmatar. Now, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to go with the Minmatar. It's worth noting that these four ships that you see here are the only ships that are locked to you depending on your race, and they're pretty worthless after about the first 10 minutes of the game, so unless it's just a case of, oh man, that looks really cool and I want to have one of those just for the sake of having it, really don't stress it too much. For this video, I'm going to go with the Minmatar, because of course I am, I freaking love the Minmatar. This is like my favourite bit of the backstory. Whichever one of the th uh, four empires you pick though, you then get a choice of your race within that or your bloodline. So for like the Minmatar you have the Sebiesta, the Bruta and the Verrocchior. Again, this doesn't actually do anything other than change the possibility of the different pictures that you can use for your character. And you'll notice that male and female are represented here. You just kind of pick whichever one you think looks coolest. There is a bit of backstory here that you can read through. But again, that nothing really changes for this. You don't get anything different for this other than the icon. And that icon is something you're going to be stuck with. So bear that in mind. Once you've chosen one you like, and you can hit the little sort of refresh symbol there at the bottom right of the pictures to go through and pick some more, once you've found one that you like, you can hit next on it and it will take you through to the, um, no, the confirm screen. On the confirm screen, this is your last chance to go back if you want to, tap on the top left if you want to go back and make changes or try out some of the different uh, empires. Um, if you like what you've got here, make sure to tap in here and pick a new name for yourself. Now this name needs to be something that you are readily identifiable by. So obviously for me, Captain Benzi seems like an obvious one to go for, but I'm pretty sure that even the short form here is going to be taken. Essentially, it's something that you want people to be able to call out in comms nice and quickly. So whilst it may be really awesome calling yourself like 666XXX Edgelord1349 Black Death or whatever, that's gonna make you very hard to call out on comms. Also, make sure that it is a safe name so that you don't have to have it changed by a GM after a temporary suspension from the game. So, no naming yourself after particularly prominent Nazi figures and things like that, if you please. Once you've got a name, once you've tapped on the agree to free PvP because, well, this is EVE and that's just going to happen, we can hit confirm identity. It will then check everything here and see if that name is acceptable, which, huzzah, that one actually is. 
You then get treated to this really cool cinematic, along with a little bit of gameplay that I will leave you to play through now. A short while into the game, you'll then be asked to name and design your AI. This is basically just when you open up certain menus, you're going to get a little voiceover. Don't stress this too much. Either you can keep the name standard, it's here in the center. I'm just going to go with Una Holt. You can then choose whether it's going to be female and which of the female voices you like the sound of, or whether it's going to be one of the male voices. I'm going to go for a middling female voice there, and you can listen to what it sounds like. And as you tap on each of these, you'll get different samples of that different voice. Once you have with this, press OK. Now I do recommend actually reading through all of this and getting an idea of what's going on, but if you hold down on the screen you can times to it and you can actually hit skip. This will eventually bring you to a combat tutorial which I do strongly recommend you pay as close attention to as possible. I'm going to leave you to that and I'll rejoin you once this bit's complete. After a bit of an information bombardment and surprisingly boring combat, do rest assured things do get a lot more exciting than that as the game goes on, you'll then be given this option here of either starting a course or refusing to perform the tutorial. 100% hit start course on this. This is one of the most vital things for a new player. This is going to try and teach you a lot of exciting concepts and teach you how the game itself works in as hands-on way as possible whilst telling a fairly engaging storyline. Look, it's not going to win a Pulitzer anytime soon, but it is a pretty solid storyline that you can go through here. Basically, followed through these tutorials, they will give you new ships, they will give you skill points, you will earn ISK, which is the currency in the game. Keep going through these. This is one of the biggest, most vital points I can say to a new player. You want all of the free skill points that this is giving you. That's what this icon here is. These are skill points and they're how you level up and get access to more ships. They're how you make your abilities of flying these ships better. We'll talk about skills more later on, but for now, make sure you are going through this tutorial uh, mission by mission. Read it, Pay attention to the best of your ability, but know that we will be sort of rehashing a lot of this in the Catskull Academy. We'll talk about a lot of the concepts that the tutorial covers in a bit more depth and detail to really help nail it in for you. All you want to do though is, as I said, go through these tutorials for now. Other than making sure that you do the tutorials, there are some other very important pieces of advice that I can give to you as a new player. And the first one is this, trust nobody. This is EVE, and it is a cutthroat game where players are just as likely to cause harm to each other as they are to help. That is part and parcel of the game. That player versus player aspect is a key component of what makes EVE, EVE. Now this means that when you start the game, you have this white chat scrolling past on the left hand side of the screen. This is the global new player help chat, and any player can join this, supposedly with the intent of helping new players like yourself find their footing. This, however, should always be taken with a grain of salt. If someone is offering you something that sounds too good to be true, like, hey, fly out to me and I'll give you 10 million isk, I'll give you a new ship, I'll give you all of this cool stuff, think to yourself for a second why they might be doing that. Now, it is possible it might be someone genuinely good intentioned trying to help you out. On the other hand, they might be trying to lure you to somewhere where they can blow up your ship and earn themselves another kill mark. Again, this is Eve. Stomping on newbies is part and parcel. It's something you're going to have to get used to. Trust nobody. Always assume that there is something in it for them. And if you're not sure what that is, it may just genuinely be wasting your time and sort of blowing your ship up. Bear that in mind, use the new help chat to ask questions, but try and get multiple answers and don't let someone lead you by the hand. That way you know that the, you're more likely to have an honest result. If you ask a question and three people tell you one thing and one person tells you something completely different, it's probably worth trusting the three. Even then, not always. That's why I'm running this series. Now the second thing to talk about then is skills. This is kind of the equivalent of experience points in other MMORPGs, but with some key differences. Now to look at this, if we tap on our face here in the top left, this will open up the main menu and we have skills here at the top left. So if we tap onto that, this brings us to the skill page. 
Now, if yours looks like this, we're going to change this. This is sort of the career planner skill page, and this gives you some suggested skills that you might want to train. Um, ultimately, <laughs> it's with a sandbox game like EVE, if anyone's telling you you need to do this, 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 and this before they've even asked you what it is you want to do, assume there's something wrong with that. So we're going to tap on switch here at the top, and this will take us to the true skill tree. This is neatly divided into two halves. On the left hand side we have the ship skills. These are skills directly related into flying ships and making those ships fly better. Now you can undock any ship in the game without any skills whatsoever, but be aware that that is a surefire way to get yourself blown up. You're going to want to train the right skills for the right job. On the right hand side, we have what are referred to as clone skills. These are things that affect things other than your ships and the modules. So if, for example, you want to go into things like mining and you want to be able to reprocess your ore, so more ore, so a smaller amount of ore makes more minerals, that's going to be here on the clone side. If you want to be able to turn a blueprint into a ship, if you want to be building stuff as an industrialist, then those skills are going to be here on the right hand side to make you more efficient at doing that as well. So left hand side is all the stuff about your ship, stuff on the right is all about things like industry and other tasks. Basically, for the time being, we're not going to stress about this too much. Whilst you're doing the tutorials, it's worth almost just letting the skill points fill themselves, because that's how it works here. In other MMORPGs, like for example World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy XIV Online, you earn experience points by killing enemies, completing quests, crafting, exploring, that kind of thing, and when you earn so many experience points, you level up. In EVE, you earn skill points passively, and if we tap here where it says current tech level at the top, this brings up the tech menu. This will show us here our training speed, and as standard, you will be earning 30 skill points per minute. And if this is your only character, you will actually be earning that whether or not you're logged in. So these will be something that passively trains in the background. Now there are two ways you can train skills. You can either wait until you've got skill points and then you add them to those skills, or you add new skills to the queue. Now early on, it's not really worth stressing about this all that much, because you're still doing the tutorials, you're still trying to work out what it is you actually want to do. Do you want to be a combat pilot? Do you want to go exploring? Do you want to be involved in mining and industry? Heck, even if you decide you want to be a combat pilot, what type of combat pilot do you want to be? Which weapon systems do you want to use? What type of ships do you want to fly? There's a lot of questions, and don't worry, this series will help you answer those. Before we leave this little screen here though, where it says level up progress, this is what will take you to your next tech level. Tech levels are kind of like player levels, there are 10 of them in total, tech level 1 through 10. And once you hit a new tech level, you have access to new ships, new modules, and in some cases, even entirely new gameplay modes. It's worth bearing in mind, just you'll get that notification as you go through the tutorials. Early on, whilst you're doing the tutorial, just let the skills like the skill points accrue on their own and you can add those into skills later on once you've got a better idea of what you want to do. If you do get bored and fancy having a look, head through and have a look at each of these skills and what they do. You can use these arrows here on the left and right to navigate through and get an idea of what this all does. So for example, the frigate command skill. You can see here what this does. It gives us a better inertia modifier and a higher flight velocity. So basically it means your frigates move faster and have better inertia. And if you tap here where it's got these sort of three green dots and the two grey ones, you can see how many skill points it will actually take to level each of those up. It's worth noting that the basic skills like Frigate Command and Destroyer Command only need to be trained to level 4 before you can go into Advanced and Expert, but you'll also notice those are locked behind restrictions. You can see here there's like a little Omega symbol on the right, and we'll talk about that more in a moment. But to get a feel for things, you can have a look through some of these skills, see what they do, and just get an idea of what training into skills might do for different things. And if you want to see what future levels, for example here we've got Small Laser Operation, currently at level 2, if I tap this sort of triple, the hamburger symbol here, and open it up, this gives us a breakdown of what each level will do. 
This is not cumulative, this is total. So for example here you can see at the top, small laser damage is 4% at level 1, plus 8% at level 2, plus 12% at level 3, plus 16% at level 4, and plus 20% at level 5. That doesn't stack, it means once you hit level 5 it is plus 20% small laser damage and plus 10% small laser tracking speed. And don't stress too much if you don't know what these mean. It's just familiarise yourself with what skills are available and where. Finally then, we need to talk about monetization, because obviously this is a free-to-play game, it does have ways that obviously the game is going to try and get money from you. Now first and foremost, and the most important by a stretch, is what is referred to as Omega. Remember when we were looking at the skill tree, we had all of these different restrictions here where it says Omega? Now if you are an Omega clone, and we'll talk about what more that means in a moment, then you have access to all of those. If we were to have a look at the ship tree, Tree as well. Any of the ship trees, we'll go with the Mimitar one, you'll see that as you go up the tech levels you start unlocking more ships. Once we hit tech level 8 they all have the Omega symbol on them which means you cannot fly anything tech 8 or higher without an Omega subscription. Basically think of EVE Echoes as a subscription based game. This game is expecting you to pay a monthly subscription. However, you can earn the ability to you can earn that subscription through gameplay and we'll talk about that more in a moment. You can be gifted that through gameplay. There's all kinds of ways you can get it. And if for example you pay for a month of subscription and then you don't have enough for next month and your subscription lapses, you can still play the game just only using basic level skills and only ship up to and including tech level 7. It's going to take you a while before you hit tech level 7 though, so don't stress that too much, and even your basic level skills will take you surprisingly far in the game, at least to sort of tech level 5, tech level 6. Around about that point is when you should be looking at getting Omega. Now Omega comes in a couple of different flavours, I suppose we can talk about it. We have what's referred to as basic Omega, then we have standard Omega, then we have duo or combo omega, depending on how it works. Now, on how you want to look at it. Now, basically, the standard omega, the, sorry, the basic omega unlocks everything. If you just want to go for the basic 30 day omega here, this will unlock absolutely everything everything that the game has to offer. It will actually also increase how fast you start training skill points, um, but it unlocks all the ships level 8 and above, and it will unlock all of those skills that we saw on the skill tree. So anything that has sort of the Omega restriction on it, for example Advanced Frigate Command, that will be lifted as long as you have an Omega subscription. Now, on top of this, you could instead go for a standard, um, Omega. This will again unlock everything and give you more skill points per minute and you can theoretically go all the way up to a duo Omega um, which is both a standard and a basic combined. It unlocks everything in the game and gives you the maximum amount of skill points per minute of 60. This ultimately is not important early on. If you want to have an Omega early on um, to get access to absolutely everything because you want the advanced skills, it is the basic Omega that you need. That is going to be your starting point. That is all you need to unlock everything. All these two do is give you more skill points per minute, and there are other ways to do that as well if we head down to things like the recommended um, and indeed right down to pilot service. Beyond below all of this as well, there are these items here called cognitive neuroscience chips. What this does is basically permanently increases your uh, your skill speed, your amount of skill points you earn per minute. These are worth getting early on if you're going to get them, because obviously um, the sooner you start, the sooner they start giving you returns. If you're a tech level 3 player and you're earning suddenly 75 skill points per minute, you're going to be leveling up a lot faster than once you've hit tech 9 you're pretty much already there. It's like buying a speed boost just before you hit the finish line. Um, the most important though, absolutely, is getting that basic Omega. You might decide you don't want it early on. If you've got one character running only, and that's the character you're playing, you won't need Omega until you want to start training advanced level skills or using tech 8 or higher ships. 
If you want to be able to train multiple characters, however, if you want two or three characters on the same account, then the ones that are training must have Omega. It's, as you can see, this character does not have Omega, so if I'm trying to add another skill to the training queue, the game is going to tell me I already have two characters that are training, I cannot train a third one unless this one is, um, uh, is an Omega character. That is one thing to bear in mind. Again, if you're a new player, you shouldn't need to worry about that. Basic Omega is all you need to worry about, and only if you have multiple characters, or you want to be training advanced skills, or you want to be using tech level 8 or higher ships, which you cannot early on. Hopefully, that's nice and clear. We've talked about skills, we've talked about monetization, hopefully that makes sense. If you do have any questions about any of this at all, you can contact me either by coming and joining our Discord, there's a link in the description down below that will take you through to the Catskull Academy Discord, where you can speak to a whole bunch of like-minded folks who will help you out and help you to sort of get your feet in New Eden, and I know that I sat there and said don't trust anybody, that is a moderated Discord designed specifically to help new players out, and we will not allow the trolls to sit and sort of, you know, harass you there. Beyond that as well, you can reach out to me directly, either on Twitter, at CPTBenzie, short for Captain Benzie. There is even an email attached to my YouTube where you can email me there, or just message in the comment section down below, and I'll do what I can to help, as will other players. They'd like to read the comment section and answer any questions. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for more. In our next lesson, we'll be having a look at the ship overview, talking about what your ship is, how it works, and what all the stats around it actually mean. So, hopefully this has been helpful, look forward to seeing you next time, happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!